Well, big news out of NVIDIA's GTC conference in San Jose. CEO Jensen Huang unveiling the company's next generation Blackwell AI chip, as well as new partnerships with software giants and news it is bringing its omniverse enterprise technology to Apple's Vision Pro headset. Joining us now on all this news, someone who attended the keynote. There you go, you got that selfie, Ray. Ray Wong is Constellation Research founder and principal analyst. Always gotta get that selfie, Ray. Um, you know, look, this is a stock, when we're talking about NVIDIA, that is up about 75% year to date. We're seeing it down today about 2%. Is that just a matter of a little profit taking on the back or sell the news situation? Uh, Kiko, you're definitely right. They are taking some profit taking, uh, some money off the table. I think a lot of the news was being hyped up all the way into the conference. And I think that's where the stock price was there. But I think we learned a lot of things at the conference. And I think the most important piece is that NVIDIA is no longer just a chip company. If you look at all their extensions, they're focused on the next layer, which is really that getting that chip extended out into the ecosystem. And then of course, focusing on software, which is really important for them going forward. Yeah, we'll talk about that software part in just a minute, but this is a stock that still largely trades on that potential or not even potential, just the demand coming through from their GPUs. The Blackwell chip here, B200 yesterday that was unveiled, um, largely expected, but give me your first impression here about how this elevates NVIDIA's offering and really what this means for AI overall. Well, they did three things that were very important. One, they had backward compatibility, which means if you have your old H100 chip, you can swap it out onto Blackwell. The second thing they did was they built a Lego type architecture that says you can tie all these GPUs together. And so it's almost like, you know, we can turn like 10 GPUs into one big giant GPU. You can take a thousand GPUs, turn it into one big giant GPU and pull those resources. And then I think the third thing we learned is this Blackwell platform actually achieves what we call Jensen's law, not Moore's Law anymore, the ability to double a thousand times compute every eight years. That's actually an incredible thing when you think about what's required to take AI to the next level. Yeah, I mean, it, it's so hard to, I was trying to wrap my head around what exactly that means today, Ray, given how far we've already come, right? How does this stack up against the competition? Yes, NVIDIA is still far out ahead, but AMD as well as Intel really trying at least to make inroads here. So there are a couple of things happening. I mean, if you look at the chip making ecosystem, there were some partnerships that were announced with Cadence, Ansys, Synopsys. So how you layer the chips, how you put the chips together, how you design them, and of course, how you manufacture the chips with TSMC. They're taking advantage of TMC's three nanometer technology, and more importantly, the ability to actually bring these chips together and package them in the right way. These are some of the most advanced chip making technologies that are out there, and there's nothing like it to be seen. And so the question is whether AMD or Intel or other chip manufacturers can catch up? Or will people come up with an alternative to GPUs to be able to solve the same set of problems? I think the latter is what we're going to be looking for to say, is there something that will challenge the dominance of the GPU and will it come in a different package? Uh, you talk about the software part of it. I mean, this is NVIDIA sort of hinting at investors. We're not just about chip making here. Um, we did see them launch a cloud service for researchers to be able to test out NVIDIA's um, quantum computing software. In the grand scheme of things, how big of a revenue driver is a software side likely to be for NVIDIA? In the long term, the software side will probably be bigger than the chip part of the business. But when I mean long term, think five to seven years out when the creation of the Internet, right, was out there. I mean, we all thought the infrastructure companies were going to win, right? We're like, ALL, they're going to be up there, right? You're talking about all these other companies like, hey, what's going to happen with Verizon and the telco business? But it turned out companies that actually built business models on the Internet as a distribution channel, they're the ones that actually succeeded. It's kind of like the story that people talk about in the refrigeration business when people were building out refrigerators. It's like refrigerator manufacturers are going to be the top companies, but the company that won out was Coca-Cola. So it's companies that can actually build software on top of these new ecosystems. These are the ones that can actually build and make AI come to life. Yeah, long term then, certainly something investors are going to be focused on. Um, going back to, Ray, uh, the Blackwell platform here, the Hopper line, which is the one that preceded it, we're talking about 30000 to, what, $40,000 per chip. Um, what's the pricing that you're looking at for Blackwell specifically where you think it would um, allow NVIDIA to maintain at least the revenue momentum that we have seen? 
Well, they haven't announced pricing, but I think most people expect it to be slightly more expensive than the existing chipsets, uh, and because of the modularity and because of the reverse compatibility that's there. Uh, so there hasn't been a lot of information about the pricing uh, capabilities of what they're doing. But I think the important piece is just to understand that you know the the architecture is backward compatible, which means people keep their H100 chips and then they'll upgrade to Blackwell or different components of Blackwell. You could see all the different combinations that you could do to combine what was happening on a Hopper chip and a Blackwell platform. And that was really the idea to say, you know, this is not a one-way street. It actually works back both ways. And you can actually connect existing legacy architecture with this. And all the software will work the same in CUDA as well. Ray Wong, Constellation Research founder and principal analyst. Always good to have you on the show. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you, Kiko.